Let's take the quick break. Let's get Omar Kelly and our EJDconstruction.com Miami Dolphins report. That is next. The Big O Radio Show is home for the hardcore Dolphins fan. That's why we give you Omar Kelly twice a week. Buckle up. It's time for the EJDconstruction.com Miami Dolphins report exclusively on the Big O Radio Show. All righty, we are ready to rock and roll. It is the EJDconstruction.com Miami Dolphins report with the one and only Omar Kelly. Oh, are you, uh, you're, you're half Cuban, right? Is that what it is? Uh, I am. I I think you're I'm, half one, one, I'm one third Cuban. Uh, my okay. kids are right. even higher percentage. My mother's father's Cuban. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I knew there was a Cuban involved in there. You're a half hour. Cubans are late to their own funerals, bro. I mean, that's just the way it is, you know. Uh, I think it's tw- technically I'm 25 percent Cuban. Yes. Well, it was 100 percent. What took a what took a blame for this half hour here? We'll, we'll give it. We'll give it. We'll blame it on the Cuban oh, side. That, and, that's I, what and, it I, is. and I and I can say that by the way. Okay. All so, right. Yeah, you know it's you know the rule. You can pick on your own. So that's just the way. That's the way it goes. All right. Oh, uh, first of all, let's start off with Tua. I thought he played really, really well. That one decision, uh, which was the, t- the 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 interception to the tight end. And you know what? I thought of a little Marino. And, and follow me on this. I he drops back and he goes, "I got him open," but dude, he dropped my last one. Let me look quickly over there at the one on one on that side. But when he came back, that bracket closed in on him and it was over. And he made the mistake. And I don't even know if he really thought that because he's not, he doesn't think like Marino would, you know, he would take it out on your ass. If you drop balls, you were, you were, you were out of the, the game plan. He was going to find somebody else. Screw you. I don't think Tua was thinking that I'm having some fun with it. But outside of that one pass, I really like what I saw from the kid, considering he didn't have, you know, the, a great line in front of him, but at least in pass protection, they gave him enough time. They did give him enough time. Um, Certainly the line is something that probably needs the most work out of all the rest of the team. But uh, Tua showed the fans in the season opener what we've kind of consistently seen uh, in in training camp, Uh, not necessarily the joint practices, but in training camp, accuracy, anticipation, um, pocket presence. Uh, And I can tell you he's very efficient in the red zone, despite what you saw. I know – um, he blames himself for that being a late throw, but you know Adam Shaheen was open technically. He was, he was open. open. That, that was the a great play by the defensive yeah. player. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah the first and, time. Yeah, right and there. you know, he's gonna. The thing about two is there's no question that he's intelligent enough. He's hardworking enough. He's gonna learn and he's gonna grow from that. And every mistake that you add on to the pile. Um, it's just going to be a frame of reference that he has that allows him to build that index that makes him a better player. Yeah, see, I, I said earlier in the show is if he's Jameis Winston, I don't know if he learns from that mistake because he'll make it again and he'll make it again. Like some other quarterbacks in the history of the NFL, this is not this kid. He'll learn from that moment there. And the next time, he'll let it go earlier and he'll and he'll yeah. have been – easily open for the touchdown you know what i'm saying so for me that's where i don't worry so much about him i actually think it's a good thing for him to have that one mistake out of that entire performance because you think about it shaheen has the drop they also have the penalty on the other play to foster right and so you have the interception you 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 clean that up and man it would have been one amazing performance well, yeah, don't don't forget if they would have scored when they were at the goal line. I, you know, I, I think you, you know they would have passed there in a real game. They would have yeah, passed. There. Uh, they I, were just I, trying, I, to, trying to run no, it. I don't think they would have passed there from this standpoint. At, Brian Flores wants to be a physical running team. He just can't get there. Um, and they worked on it. I watched them work on it all. I watched them work on it for for the past two weeks. Um, you know, goal line punching in, goal line runs, some some goal line runs. And they got to figure out, they got to develop a formula. They got to develop a formula. Even the starting of, of Malcolm Brown to start the game, that was, we're going to run, we're going to establish a run, pound it, identity. And, you know, I, I feel like they're trying to, you know, turn, force a circle into a square peg. And, you know, it is what it is. This is, you know, you are you are what your personnel says that you are. And right now, even though you've got 
a hulking big offensive line, you, you just don't have that 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 girth and that power to to smash it in. Well, let's start on the left side. Austin Jackson out of balance at times, reaching at times. He kind of did enough to get in the way in the passing game, but obviously he couldn't get any movement whatsoever in the running game. Had the hold also uh, um, on Saturday. Uh, it was uh, it was a poor performance by the kid, unfortunately. It was, um, and, and I don't know if it's an indic indic indicative of where he is in his development. I, I would say that it's probably his worst performance in the NFL so far. Um, and the question is, what can he learn from it? What can he grow from it? Uh, and and let, let's not play like Robert Quinn is, is a slouch because he's not. No, he's um, a good player. He's a good right. player. Um, it, you know, Austin Jackson even acknowledged that he threw things at him that he had never seen before. Yeah. Um, and, and you know that's that's what you've got to do when you face. Quinn. I don't. I don't think we got a healthy Robert Quinn. We got the the one that no. was coming off of an injury, and then that year that he was here, and then he was gone. It's the year after is when he got healthy and started to play really well again. That was kind I, of the. I, I'm, I'm not even sure. Quinn. I don't think he was that focused down here, and and that was one of the things that's, that that I, I picked up. Some some guys come here to Miami and they kind of lose it. And, and he, he was might... fresh off that he was fresh off back surgery, remember? So that's mm -hmm. where I gotta yeah, give him but I... you know what? You know, I don't I don't use that as an excuse because all they kept doing was raving about how good he was, uh, you know, turning bend and twist and turn how great he was gonna be as a pass rusher. But and then he surgery, and then, bro. Uh, yeah, no, surgery. no, but if you're if you're sitting here twisting and bending and getting low and 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 practicing like a beast, and then it gets the game time and you don't deliver, I, I'm not gonna excuse it on back surgery. No, I, I know, but I, I, I kind of—he uh, uh, don't get a pass from me because okay, I, I was in that locker room and that guy was thinking about everything but football. Okay, all right, all right. You you might be right on that. Some it's guys just, come know, down here. I know the Dolphins. Yeah, yeah, and they no, get, yeah. They get lost in the life. And, and yeah, 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 yeah. That won't happen with this dude. That's the difference. Flo will read that that BS right away and cut your ass and get rid of you. I think when it's all said and done. By the way. I thought Solomon Kinley actually. When I rewatched the game yesterday, I thought he did all right. Actually, I thought I thought he, he was the best right. lineman actually in uh, in the game. Maybe no, uh, Jesse was Davis was. But anyway, well, you, you, nobody ever wants to give Jesse Davis any respect. He did, no, he did a solid job. I thought uh, he did solid, Solomon, and, and I, I thought Peter was all right too. But but I thought Kinley actually played well. I thought I saw him move some people sometimes. Dieter was on the ground a little bit too much for my personal taste in terms of Solomon. Solomon did what I think he's going to be there to do, which is Solomon's very hard to bull into the quarterback. So he's going to be good pass protection wise. It's just the run game. I, you know, I, I compare him to John Jerry. You're not going to get sacks on him, but he's not going to help you in the run game. Uh, and Dieter was OK. He was on the ground a little bit too much for my personal taste. I, I don't think they really have a center on this roster. We'll see. I mean, it was a very tough Bears defensive line. I'm not sure we can name five other defensive lines that were tougher than them. Uh, the the question is, the question is, can they build on it? Because they're not going to see the Bears every single week. This week it's Atlanta. They don't have a forceful defensive line. Um, right. Can can we see them take a step forward against Atlanta? Learn from the mistakes that they made against Chicago and sort of grow and develop. What would you think of everybody else, Dieter, Hunt, and uh, and and Jesse? You I, thought, a I thought about... Hunt did well. I thought Hunt did well. There are pictures of him on the ground, but I, I think, you know, he helped himself in a run game, which is really what they what, what they brought him there to do. Um, Jesse, I thought he did well in the games when they, before they pulled him. Um, it's the pulling him, not the performance that that's really troublesome. And I I know people don't get what I'm saying when I'm saying this, but. If you got an offensive lineman on a pitch count, offensive linemen play roughly about 1,300 snaps a game, a, a season. Um, if you've got an offensive lineman on pitch count because of knee soreness and, and durability and you don't want him to wear down, at some point you got to think that Jesse Davis is going to wear down, and which is where my concern for this line, line lies. Uh, and, and I know Dolphin fans, they, they, they're like, oh, it was only one exhibition game. Understand I've been watching this for three weeks now. Um, they've got absolutely no depth whatsoever. Um, Adam Pankey's the best backup, and I'm not sure he would make another team's 53-man roster. So if you got Adam Pankey, 
Matt Skura and Larnell Col Coleman as as your top backups, and somebody gets hurt. Because let let's Ooh. let's be real about this. We've watched the Dolphins. If, 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 if Panky's in there, I'm panicking. Panky was all right. Panky's all right. I I I I would me personally. I would like if if Adam Lynchburg cannot come back this week, I would like to see Panky get a shot at left guard. That's me personally. I mean, Adam Lynchburg is Eric Eichenberg, or, or is that it was, uh, Liam uh, Liam Eichenberg? Liam Eichenberg. Uh, sorry. Right. Uh, um, okay. So let's change it, his name all over the place. Go ahead. So right. if, if uh, I, I got this thing with with uh, Zach Sealer, I call him Ryan all the time. Right, Ryan. All and I have no idea who Ryan Sealer is. That's like, all right. It, I say I say Sealer Siler, so it's uh, I get. Oh it. yeah, it, it, yeah. It's it, 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 so um, from the offensive line standpoint, I think they need to do. And I, I wrote a column about this in the Sun Sentinel. We've been we've been down this road too many times. We've gone into seasons where we're on our seventh offensive lineman as a starter and have to use him for half the season. This is not going to do. It's just not. And if you don't do something now, within the, the but before August thirty first or before uh, the second game of the season, maybe wait until after contracts are guaranteed and bring in a veteran like Chicago brought in Jason Peters uh, uh, on on Saturday. If you don't do something, a Russell Okun, a, a Mitchell Schwartz, if you don't do something, you're going to have an O line disaster on your hands. Not. Wait, wait. So they're allowing NFL players now to play with walkers? Because, I mean, Jason Peters is like 87 years old, bro. 30, Jason Peters is 30. I know it's a, it's a titanium walker that he's going to need because he's a big-ass dude. Hey. But come on, bro. I mean, Jason Peters. I, I, I thought it was a great signing for Chicago. Listen, Chicago's in just as much of desperate straits as Miami is. and uh, they, they are playing without their two starting tackles. They, they have to do something. You, if you want to sit here and you think that it's good enough right now and we're going to invest in these young players and they're going to turn the corner and we're not going to have any injuries, I'm telling you, you're going to make a mistake. And then when we get to week eight and the O-line's trash and it's changing the entire offense and Tua can't do anything but three-step because he can't doesn't have time and they don't have no, any running game, don't say I didn't tell you. Don't say that. Okay, don't say, but you're, you're giving up already? I don't, this I, I don't know if I bought in to begin with to, but to, uh, for giving up. Here's you know, my thing. Saying, it's not a matter of buying in yet, but it's not a matter of cashing out. Oh, I'm, I'm not ready out. to cash I'm, I'm not ready to I, I, I was Wait never – I Wait think first. that that offensive line, as constructed, can be at its best average. And that's just not good enough for me. They're and I'm talking young. about – I'm talking They're about full development. full development. Full development. How do you, how do you know that they're too young to say something like that? I don't. See you can have three Pro Bowlers on that team. You, you should you should you should see signs. There's there's nothing you saw last year where it said signs. Austin Jackson probably is the one guy who showed you early in the season it wasn't too big for him, but he's not on the same level as a Laramie Tunsil. He's just an okay. He he, 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 he wasn't drafted like Laramie Tunsil. He Laramie wasn't. Tunsil. Larry Mitunsa was supposed to be a top five pick that only fell because of a stupid mask. That's the only reason he fell, but he was one of those guys that you looked at as Panay Suel. Mm -hmm. He was a franchise type. The, when you're taken at 17, you're not considered a franchise. 18. Yeah, 18. 18. It doesn't 18, matter. 18, Juwan, 12, Juwan James 22, got, you're not a franchise tackle if you're there. I, okay, let me, let me put it to you, you where could, you can reach you it. I don't even think he's Juwan James. Oh, okay. Well, uh, he, he 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 actually played a whole year, so that's he's better than Jawan James already. Jawan played his first three years. Stop. Be fair. No, he didn't. He got injured all the time. Jawan James was a sack of injuries, bro. No, nah, he didn't. He didn't get injured until I think his fourth year in, in the league. Jawan James would get injured coming out of the car, bro, and in, in, in the facility. What are you talking that was about? Lar that was Laramie getting out the he's shower. Juan James is the Sam Bowie of the NFL. Come he's, on. He's not. You're young. You know who Sam Bowie is? You know who Sam yeah, Bowie is? Yeah, I know is? who Sam Bowie is. Right, they, right. Uh, they took him over Michael Jordan, right? There uh, you go. Yeah. There you go. There you he's go. He was, he was in Santa. And Austin he was, Jackson he was, Greg, he was Greg Oden before Greg Oden is what he was. Without, without exposing his penis. 
Okay. One of those two oh, things yeah. right there that made Greg Oden. Greg Oden was famous for that. You got a for hell of a role. Failing as a pick, for failing as a pick and for picking his penis out in the uh in the public, which is just crazy. All right, so let's move on to Noah Igbenogamy. He made the one play, but then he had uh, a, a couple of other shady plays. So, uh, you know, one of the things I was talking about is this is a kid that still has to learn this position. So really, you know, that's another reason why they wanted X2 on this team, because they knew they had to buy this kid another year of development. Uh, what did you see from him? Uh, oh, because it looks like he has, he, he, when it comes to awareness of that position, boy, he's got to develop a lot of instincts because it just seems like it doesn't come natural to him right now. And, and it probably should come a little bit more natural because he's a receiver, so she should know receiver routes and breaks and passing routes and things of that nature. I'm, I'm not ready to give up on him. There's there's good, there's bad. Um, we're, we're, we're in the, we're in the um, Jamar Taylor territory of, of, of who he is as a player. Uh, he'll probably be in the league for seven years, maybe a spot starter, but never, never be a guy that you can kind of rely on. That's, that's where he is right now, but who knows? I like him. I, he's been in my man crush list for, of guys that, that, that I believe in. Um, he's the only cornerback in all of college football that ever shut down Devin Smith or ever defended Devin Smith properly. Dev Devonta, by the way, he's not Devonta Smith. Yeah. Right. Devonta Smith. Um, I, I'm not ready to give up on him, but uh, let, let's be real about this. Nick Needham is a better cornerback right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Definitely. I mean, let's definitely. Let, let's let's stop pretending. Let's stop. Let's stop elevating Noah because he's a first round pick. Um, at, nah, we're, at the same time, let's give Nick Needham some love too because I, the kid I'm, is a, I'm a big it, love, Nick Needham love guy now. You got you got to love it because he has worked his ass off to get to this point. Nick and when you, you love those undrafted, unheralded guys to just come out of nowhere and establish. Nick Needham is one of my favorite guys. Just there's Jesse Davis and Nick Needham, and you know what they both have in common? Those are guys where they've get, been given absolutely nothing. They come right. into training camp buried every year. Nobody believes in him. I we signed your replacement, and they just work their butts off, perform, and and rise to the top. And and. and I think Nick Needham's going to end up being a starter this year. I, I can tell you right now, practice he's, he's, he's the He's the nickel guy, right? Right now he's – No, hard. no, Justin Coleman's the nickel guy, and I don't think that's true. So you think he's the dime guy? Yeah. Nick, Nick, Nick's a boundary – no, I don't even think Nick's the dime guy. Jason McCourty's the dime guy. Nick, Nick is so – you, you got him as the third corner coming yes, off? Yes, he's the uh, third cornerback. Yeah. And, and listen, right. Nick's not going to complain. Nick's going to go out there and play, and Nick's going to go out there and make plays. But I, I will tell you this, and people people get in their feelings and, and whatever, whatnot. There is no difference with how Nick Needham has performed and how Byron Jones has performed this training camp. And and to be honest with you, there's no difference between how they performed in last year's training camp either. The, right. it, it, so I'm a, I'm a believer that Nick can get the job done. Now, just don't ask him to cover speedy slot receivers. Okay. All right. Well, all right. I, I like that, but I like him, man. He is really I love it. superstar. I call every time he does something. Cause we, we make fun of Flores because Flores gave us a lecture in 2019 about make, people don't understand. I, I remember that. I remember yeah, that about making Nick Needham had a game one, the game with a game winning interception. Uh, you know, he's, he's a star, a, a solidified himself as a starter and, we're writing Nick Needham features, and here comes Brian Flores. Oh, y'all out here making him a superstar. Calm down. Like, yeah. you know, yeah, hey, making him feel like he's a superstar. Like, that man has earned the little yeah. respect that we have given yeah. him. And so yeah. anytime he, anytime Nick Needham does anything positive, I always put out that Saturday Night Live superstar gif. Yeah, yeah. He And, and he didn't start well. And then he really developed into a nice little player that first year, and and he's grown from it. So you think Coleman is locked in now as Absolutely. the nickel guy? All right, he, bring, so he brings a physicality to the position that they don't get with anybody else. So where do they, where do they go dime now? Right now at the depth chart, the, Jason McCourty comes into the cornerback, and Javon Holland goes back there free safety. So that's that's where they are as a dime package. Um, I, I like it. I, I think it's good. Um, Nick's just that next guy up. Nick's and and uh, honestly, that you, 
I haven't been here a season where they haven't had to use at least five cornerbacks to make it through a game. So, of course, yeah, you got to. So have, yeah. uh, he'll he'll play plenty. Yeah, uh, the best returners in the NFL: Jakeem Grant and Jalen Waddle, right? Jakeem, uh, you knew that was. Yeah, you knew it was did a sensational job, like always, like always, like always. Let's like let's always. get this. Let's get this trade bait. Let's uh, fifth round pick. Fifth round pick. Fifth, fifth round pick. Do you know? I'll give you two words: Nicole Hardiman. That's what I'm going to give you. You have to, and I'm going to give you the other one, Tyreek Hill. You must take a page from Kansas City, young man. Okay, Jakeem Grant is Nicole Hardiman, who will be your full time returner. After you fifth round pick, you're not taking it. Big occasionally, up. in a game that you need a touchdown late in the game, you're going to throw Jalen Waddle back there. But okay. Okay. No so I'm gonna replace my, my, my all-time famous, all, my my all-time like, franchise well, leading. I just, I just told you Tyree Kill and Nicole Hardiman. Okay. Nicole is the full-time guy, but Tyree Kill is a full-time receiver, like Jalen Waddle will be. So they can't put Tyree Kill back there full-time because that would be stupid. Big even up. though, it be, even though it would be great, it would also Big be up. stupid because you put him at risk. Big so up. Answer me this question. Fan. And answer he's me this question. Off, and he's coming off a foot injury. Answer me so this question, Big O. Both. Answer me this question, Big O. Yes. Houston offers you a fifth round pick for Jakeem Grant. No way. No What's way. Fifth... Hell no, dude. I... You gotta give me you gotta give me a top three round pick for him. I'm not giving you one of the best returners in the NFL for what? a fifth rounder. What's a fifth rounder? Omar, Omar, what's a fifth rounder, bro? You're not, so so after drafting him in the fifth round, you're not gaining anything after all this. You've developed one of the best three returners in the NFL, and you're just going to hand them away for a fifth rounder, Omar? No way, dude. That's crazy. You you I, he, they just prove why you need those two guys there. Come because even me, if one, even if one gets me. injured, you have the other. Okay. All right. All right. They prove why they need him. He's phenomenal. Jakeem's going to get 100 punt return, kickoff return yards. He'll only drop about 20 passes this year. Let's he'll drop, do it. He'll, he'll drop less because he'll play less. <laughs> he'll, he'll throw him less. Okay? Now where I got don't want him in the offense – Fine. Keep now, up. Now, 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 where my my comparison goes to complete shit is that Nicole Hardiman's a much better receiver. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's you know that's give, a, that's. But but give me a fifth rounder. Out. Give me your second team center. I'll be good to go. I'll be oh. I'll be good to go. Come on down. A, a backup center? No, dude. Oh, I, you no, got to no, give no, me. That, that you got to give me a real. Here. If I'm if I'm parting ways with Jakeem. You got to give me a real player, bro. You got to give me a real player or a higher pick. I, I'm not just handing you a guy that flips the field, man. I can't do that. I wouldn't do I'm that. I'm not arguing that the team Dolphins. doesn't flip the field. I'm not arguing it. Well, you the can't argue that. Waddle flip the field. You can't. <laughs> you argue that the Sun Sentinel should fire your ass if you Does argue Jalen that. Waddle but, flip the field. Yes. All yes. right. Then do. Why do I Jalen need to Waddle. keep Jalen Waddle's coming off a of foot surgery. All right. You know, I'm not putting the burden of him to return everything and then be one of your frontline receivers. That's Fine. why I told you. Tyreek Hill. So we'll they trade the team at the trade deadline then. They don't even Three. do that with Tyreek Hill, dude. They, Deion Sanders, you want him returning every punt. But the they team got is a, one of your top they got commodities. They didn't, they didn't have a piece that you need. Jakeem is yeah. one of your top pieces that you have. Dangling out there in your train, oh, bait, no, don't like take you always things. do about this time. No go dangling. get yourself an offensive lineman for Jakeem. No dangling. No dangling. He, well, he's, be, he's being dangled. He's being dangled. Trust me, oh. Jakeem's being dangled. I think only you guys believe that he's being dangled. I think they say hell no because that gives you field position every single time. You, that guy's a Listen, game changer, bro. Late in games? They score a touchdown. I'm putting Jalen on one side and Jakeem on the other on kickoffs. And I'm going to scare the crap out of your ass because whoever you kick it to, you're F, dude. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You doing twin returners? Hold on, hold on. You doing twin returners? Yeah, with those two. Late in a game, down by seven? Yes. 
That way you can't corner, you can't cough and kick and and then and then try to control it. You got those two guys. I can do reverses. I can I can torture your ass with those two guys back there. I, I'm telling you, Miami has the two best returners in the NFL right now with Jalen Waddle coming to the mix. And you've got that's why I said Hardeman and Hill, because you're going to use Jakeem all the time, but every once in a while. When you need a little extra juice, you can bring in Waddle and you can add that juice. But you can't, a kid coming off foot surgery, you can't put him full time as a returner and full time as a receiver. That would just, that would be dumb. You would risk injury again. And he's already limping. I, listen, yeah. I, yes. I, 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 listen, whatever you want to do, all I'm saying is give me a fifth round pick for Chiquin. Give me an off, give me an offensive lineman. More than that, I, and I'm 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 moving on. Oh, man, you uh, cap, create more. some cap space. Maybe I think about signing Mike Gesicki. See, look at you. I throw you a bone. Maybe I even think about signing Mike. Now you're, now you're on. The, you're, now you're with me on signing Gesicki. Now, no, huh? no, no, no. I'd rather let him play out the season and franchise him. I'd rather franchise him. Okay, that's fine. But either way, I'm still signing him because I could keep him while Hunter develops, and then if Hunter develops, then I let him go and I sign Hunter and I draft another guy. And you just. Keep the cycle going overall. That's it. Uh, defense, uh, defense, by the way, looked good, man. Two first downs in the first half, and they got it late in that first half. Uh, and I know they weren't facing, you know, world beaters at quarterback. I get it. But they weren't playing with their starting corners either. Overall, they – they Ogba wasn't playing. No, Ogba so, wasn't there, starting corners. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and Jalen Phillips also didn't play, which, you know, we want to see him. But I thought, you know, got to give some love to the defense, right? I mean, they played I, I, well. I don't have a problem. I, I thought they did well up until they kind of just pulled the rug up from under the team. I thought Tua should have gotten one more drive. Uh, I would have loved to have seen the defense, um, you know, start out the second half against against um, um, Justin Fields. The way feel, and it's exhibition season. I I think that that Flores created just as much just enough adversity so that he can coach it you know what i'm saying just as enough just as enough like so, so negativity so that he could say listen we got you know we we got we got we got things to fix we got issues to address we 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 got to get better and it's true they got to get better i mean if we're talking about a playoff team i didn't see a playoff team on on, on that field against chicago and, and not yeah you know, i'm not talking about the second half um, you know, and I know starters didn't play, but uh, I, I obviously you want to see more weaponry. You want to see, you know, the wide receivers get heavily involved. I, I and I know they held back because you didn't see any jet sweeps. You didn't you didn't see any di with di dizzle dazzle with Waddle. Um, so you know, yeah, they're not gonna uh, show you anything. Yeah, no, nah, I mean, uh, well, I've, I've seen it, but yeah, they're not they're not gonna show it in the exhibition season, and you didn't see any RPO. So you know, hey, props to them. Um, I think they could play better. I would have loved for them to punch it in. I would have loved for them to 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 and not throw that turnover in the red zone. I would have loved for them to play the second half a little bit better. They made Justin Fields look like he's about to be a Pro Bowl player, and and I know that wasn't the first team defense, but trust me, he ain't that good. So I uh, you, you you gotta worry a little bit about the depth. And, and yeah, I'm that, with you. The out. As I've mentioned before. I don't worry about things early because the dude has already shown me his track record is how his team starts is not how his team finishes. And so for two straight years, Flo's teams improve as the season goes on. You know, there's a, there's a coaching staff that can make adjustments in the second half. I'm not worried about that. I, I, I think this is, this is the worst you're going to see the Dolphins. And eventually that's been the track record the first two years that they do I, get I, I would I would love that if that's the case. I would absolutely right. love it. But I can I tell you run. right now, they're not going to be 100% healthy uh, throughout the season. And, yeah, they're missing a lot of starters in that game. And, and you know, they I mean, they're missing a ridiculous amount of talent offensively. And two made it look good. So hey, I'm I'm props to him. All right, let me run this by you because one of the things that, and I know that uh, Joe Shad for tried a fourth to rounder. Uh, man, <laughs> you gonna run that by me? <laughs> it's, gonna, it's gonna be like a you really bad a fourth team. rounder. Bill. Early, uh, it's gotta be a bad team so I can end up with an early fourth rounder. Yeah, maybe oh, okay. I can. I can All right, but so I found yeah. your negotiating point. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't give me the Tampa Bay fourth rounder because then, you know, that's 32nd. And no, 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 no. Give yeah. me a, a sorry ass team that's going to end up at the top picks. And I'll take, you know, Houston. I'll take their fourth rounder. That, that might be that might be a whole different ball game. Now, I'll give you the fifth. It's Houston. It was going to be like the bottom of the fourth. Not, you turned me down. Yeah, so I want top third. I want bottom third is what I want. I, I got to get greedy here. If I'm if I'm giving one of the best returners in the NFL, I need something, bro. All right, fine. I, I'm, I'm not going to argue he's the best returner, one of the best returners in the NFL, the best returner in the history. I can't. That's a, that's, You're right. You I can't. can't. You can't. That's he's it. also my biggest trade commodity. He's the, and, and the smallest one, too. All right, so listen. All right, here we go. All right, so uh, I know that everybody's trying to decipher all this stuff, which it's pretty elementary. But I love the way they broke it down. And this is how they're calling plays. And clearly, God sees calling the plays. Did they really break it down? Well, yeah, he did. For me, he did. He, he gave it away without even saying anything. Well, but basically, basically, God see calls the plays, and he tells Charlie Fry, and Charlie Fry forwards it to Tua. Makes a lot of sense. If they need to do something in the running game, then Studsville will tell Fry what it is. If Godsey makes the call, hey, we better run here, then Godsey makes the call, which runs, and Fry will then forward to it. Now, this is what I love about how it gets funneled through Fry. Fry now is the guy that's in into his ear. Fry's the only guy out of the three that's played quarterback in the NFL that can okay. see things that the other guys may not see, can tell Tua, hey, I noticed the safety is cheating more to the left of the box. You might have something here in the skinny post. If on he the was right in the side. booth, I would agree with you, but he's not in the yeah. booth. Well, but it doesn't. But he's still going to be able to see. Th he's a quarterback, bro. He's going to see things that you and I don't huh? see. What I'm saying is that if he's calling the plays, he's looking at the game, and he's going to be able to talk to his language. Okay. And so I love, I love how, I and of course, there's a connection between those two guys already, as it is from years past. So okay. I really like the way they actually came about this because the guy that's talking to Tua played his position. So I, your don't, I don't disagree with you, and it's a very interesting thought process that I like. Um, I, I'm not going to say that you're wrong. I do like the fact that a quarterback is talking to him. But name the situation where the head coach or the offensive play caller isn't the last guy in the ear of the quarterback in throughout the whole, whole NFL. Before before the timer goes off, before the communication system goes off. Yeah, it's but, usually the offensive coordinator. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So now, yeah. so now in this situation, and hey, it might change and revolutionize how people coach. And I, I don't think Flores is scared to do that. Right. But right. but I mean, I, hey, let me take that back. Go ahead if you want to be, if you want to do something that's in another lane that nobody else is in. More power to you. I support it. Yeah. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, uh, you know, kill something without it actually being tried. Let, let's let them try. But at least the concept of it all, I think it was well thought. And I think it's, I think that's what they're thinking that the guy talking to Tua is the guy that knows Tua the best probably. And the guy that played the damn position at this level, whether he was great or not, that doesn't matter to me. George Gatsy was a good quarterback. I hate when people say that because he followed Joe Hamilton and he kept Georgia Tech at a high level of success. And I know this because I was a Georgia Tech fan back then, back okay. in those days. Okay. Uh, I'm and I, I and the funny thing is, I remember him as a player, and I was like, "Look at you, little man! You you yeah. you're following Joe Hamilton and you holding it up? I I mess with him about it all the time." Right, and, right, you know, they didn't drop off after they lost Joe because people don't remember Joe Hamilton was like, hey, he's the, a good player. That he yeah. was that dude before, yeah, yeah, you know, he was he allowed player. athletic quarterbacks to thrive. I remember, I remember Joe Hamilton, definitely, definitely. I remember him. Uh, but again, that you know, Fry played in the NFL, so You're I'm correct. just saying. So uh, it's just, it, it's just, I, I, the thinking, if that's what it is, hey, I, I kind of like it. I really do. I like it. I, uh, what what I don't like, and I think this is where most of me, most of my peers are, is I don't like the cloak of secrecy, the cloak of 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 misinformation that we just con constantly get bombarded with from Flores. And I get it. You know, there's no benefit to telling us things. Right. Um, but you ain't gotta lie, Craig. Hundred yeah. long ain't day to day. You ain't gotta lie. 
I know. I know. Liam, Liam Mackenberg ain't day to day. You ain't got a lot, Craig. I think, I think it was Poop Bar that goes, How is he injured or is it one of those day to day things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, like, I'm so, I'm so sick of being lied to. Like, you know, and, and it's, it's, it's kind of, it's not like he treats us like Belichick where he just doesn't say anything or he grumbles right. or grunts. Right. It's just right. like, come on, man. Stop. One, ask, just answer a goddamn question. Stop yeah. lying. Just, just but he can't, but he but he but he kills you with kindness in a way. He does. He does, it, he does it in a polite way because he's a you yeah. know he, he's mean, that we, dude. We watch somebody get amputated, he'd be like, Yeah, he's day to day. I'm like, yeah. come on, man. Stop lying, yeah. Craig. Just yeah, but he's but he's you know what? He's he's got that magic because He's a likable dude, unlike let's say Belichick, who's just dry and boring, and you're like, yeah, I, you know, I, like they're they're like like Flo will lie to you, but then he'll smile at you, and he'll just yeah, you know, like, oh yeah, that makes it better, right? Lie to my face, right? and smile, yeah, and give you know? a big old cheesy grin, like yeah. you know I'm lying. <laughs> yeah, it could be six people calling the plays when we, yeah. you know, and, yeah, I mean. You know, Tomorrow it'll be it'll be uh um the, the offensive line coach calling the plays the final guy in the headset like come on man it's just 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 give us something like just be uh and, and I, I I you know I I really it makes me miss Gates because Gates would do things where he wouldn't tell us the truth in in the press conference then then he probably he tell us the truth you know right. off off the record so we at least have institutional knowledge you know right. um. You know, Gase, I love the Gase off off the record pressers. Those were phenomenal. Um, but then you realize why he, he you know he throws so many guys under the bus. You'd re, you'd you'd realize why the team quit on him. And, and I get it. Flores is not Gase. He's never ever going to be Gase. Nothing no. even close to it. But I mean, just uh, I think I think Joe Shad said it the best. Sometimes we're looking for just a story and antidote that can just help us with something. And he can't even give that. Like right. right. Yeah. He doesn't have the magic of, of Jimmy and Riley that they they knew they understood, you know, the media's job, so they left some meat on the bone. You yeah. know what I mean? Even though they were hard asses in their give own a, way. A, I, you know what I love? Give me a sleight of hand. You want me to, like you want me to right. focus on something? Use me. Come on, use right. me. Let's let's right. Right. You, right. Like, I got you. Just just give me a sleight of hand. Tell tell that, me yeah. tell me these right. lines Riley, gotta get better. Riley was the best at that. Oh, Riley, there, no there is nobody even close to Riley that I've covered that did I, I remember, that. I remember because he, it was a way of you. not saying things, but then left you something also at the same I, time. I remember when Riley gave me the lecture telling me that I have the disease of me and oh. that, you know, and that, you know, I, I think it's about me and, you know, that that's horrible for like, man. And, and he'd always tell me, have you read the winner within? It's, it's probably sitting right over there. I, I, he said, he told me, have you read the winner within so many goddamn times? I said, God damn it. Let me go read this goddamn book. <laughs> and I finally did read the book, and I'm like, it's a good goddamn book. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> it is. He's good, man. He's good. Uh, can we – you expecting anybody from the injuries to return this week? I know it's, uh, a, it's not, really not, a not question for you to answer. Lies to me. Um, right, yeah. I know I, it's hard to answer. Devontae – I think Devontae will do an on and off practice. Okay. He, he's, he's been – he rested for a week. He'll practice one day off off the next day. Um, I think Jalen Phillips is probably going to do the same thing unless he regressed in Chicago, which we can't get an answer to. He'll practice one day, won't practice the next day. Might play in the in the exhibition game. So um, I don't know where Brandon Jones is with his ankle injury. You'll you'll get sort of more glimpses of that when we go out there for practice. I like him, man. I want to see him back on the field. I like Brandon Jones. Yes, I do. I like him. I like him. I think he can grow into a, a nice little player. We'll see. We'll see. Time yeah, will tell. Maybe, maybe when he get, get grows up. Yeah. Yeah. Time. Time will. Time will tell. But I like. Uh, I like his skill set. I think he's got it. So you expect this to be the dress rehearsal game? I actually don't. Um, okay. I think that the they will. Week? Huh? 
because they have the two weeks after the third yeah, game? Absolutely. I think that that's how. Now, it would be nice if he just tell us that, but he, nah, he won't tell us nothing. Um, so let me ask you, I was thinking about that when he didn't tell you that. There's a part of me that says if they play well and they don't have and they and they, you know, have some injuries, then, yeah, then three is going to be all the backups. This, but if they don't guy, play well and they're pretty healthy, then, yeah, three, he'll say, well, we need more work. So maybe I, I there's think, a theater. I think depth wise, I think they need everybody to work and understand. Keep in mind. This is, and it's hard for hard for me to explain this to fans, but this is a package-based team. Probably outside of maybe the offensive line and five other players, everybody plays in a package. When your package is called, you go in the game. Right. Christian Wilkins, he is a package player. If his package isn't called on the first down, he doesn't start. If his package isn't used in that game because it's a, this is this opponent is is playing that package it doesn't play to your benefit, he doesn't play. You know, same thing with Jerome Baker, package based guy. You know, there was a stretch last year in the middle of the season where Jerome didn't even play for two weeks. You know, kept hammering and like, why isn't he playing? Well, it's right. the package. So, I think that they're going to continue to. They got to practice going in for their package, going in and coming out for their package. So I think that they'll continue to do that All and right. get used to it because it's not like, oh, regular substitutions where it's like, oh, okay, this line goes in now. Okay, that line comes in now. Just like Brandon Jones. Brandon Jones is in a very specific package. And, you know, if, if – and, and I think they'll play that package all throughout the exhibition season. And if they don't use your package, that's what she said. All right, follow him on Twitter at Omar Kelly and catch him here twice a week, baby, Mondays and Fridays. For so, the so we're in agreement, a fourth-rounder from Houston, right? Fourth-rounder from Houston. A, a, a high, a, a Spicoli fourth-rounder, a very high fourth-rounder. I mean, okay. Houston's going to be high. Houston's yeah, be yeah. High. Well, usually they are. Look at the deals they make. So, yeah, they're high as hell uh, when it's all said and done. But, yeah, yeah, if you give me a top-five pick in the fourth round, yeah, I'm – uh, I'll, I'll, okay, I, I can see something like that. But in the end, you can't trade the guy that is going to return a touchdown in the first round of the playoffs this year. We shall see. Any sense. Doesn't we make any shall sense. see. We shall Doesn't see. Doesn't make any sense. Jakeem Grant's going to open up the playoffs with a touchdown. That's what's going to end up happening. Kickoff, boom, Jakeem, touchdown. Dolphins up 7 nothing in the first round of the playoffs. It's a beautiful thing, bro. That's what's going to happen. Mark it down right there. That's it. Etched in stone. Uh, don't forget, you can pod. This will be podcasted after the show, so you can listen to it again if you missed any of it. And we appreciate it. And of course, visit Eric and the great people at EJD Construction. Go to the website ejdconstruction.com. Call them 305 433 4843. Omar, as always, you're a stud, my brother. I will see you on Friday. All right. Talk to you later. You got it. You've been listening to the EJDconstruction.com Miami Dolphins Report with Omar Kelly. For additions, home remodeling, or custom work, call Eric at 305-433-4843. EJDconstruction.com is the custom home builder and general contractor you can trust. 305-433-4843.